right, so now that we know what limits are, it's time to compute some. Right, so we're going to start with some pretty basic building blocks, and then using a couple laws, we'll be able to uh, write down how to compute the limits of pretty simple functions, so polynomials and rational. Okay, so let's say we had a constant function. Here we have the constant function here. This. Okay, so this is supposed to be a straight line. All right, but let's say this is our function f of x equals okay, so this is y x value. Okay, so this function is all the way through. Okay, so then if you wanted to compute the limit of this function, point, or let's say f4, okay, we want to know right, what is the limit of f of x as x goes to 4. Right? We could do all that, you know, complex machinery of saying, okay, if I get close enough to f, what is, you know, how close does x have to be to 4, and can I always find this? And for a constant function, you know, no matter what x you have, that value is always going to be the same. Right? So for a constant function, it's just going to be the constant function. Right? So for any constant function, constant function, Know, f of x, let's say, equals t, some constant. The limit, if x goes to any point x naught, that function is just the constant, right? Because it's the same constant everywhere, so it's going to be the same constant at that point. So the limit of the function as it approaches that point is that constant, right? So any x value I pick anywhere close to this you know, limit point at 4, gives me the function value 3. Right? If I go right here, I get 3. If I go here, I get 3. And no matter how close I get to this limit point, I'm always going to have the same function value. The function limit is that constant. Okay? And then we'll do, you know, another simple function. Right? Let's say we had not a constant function, but let's say we had just the identity function. Let's say we had f of x equals x. Okay, so f of x, x, x versus y, and this is just the identity line. Okay, so then if I want to pick any point, let's say we pick 5, right, and I want to know what is this function value. Function value is 5, and what's the limit of the function as I approach 5? Well, you know, if I try, you know, 4.9, right, f of 4.9 gives me 4.9. If I try 4.999, right, I get 4.99. Right, no matter how close I ask my close to this limit point, I can always find an x value that gets me within that precision. So the function value approaches the value 5 as x goes to 5. Okay? So for, you know, function f of x is equal to x, then the limit as x goes to any point a, right in our case it was 5, of this function, is just going to be that x point a. Okay? Those are our two basic building blocks. And then we'll write down some uh, properties of limits, right? Properties of combining limits. That will allow us to write down kind of any polynomial function, we'll be able to compute the limit of it. Okay, so the first property, one, says that the limit of the sum is the sum of the limit. So if I have limit as x goes to some point a of f of x, two different functions, right, the limit of this sum is just going to be the sum of the limits, right, separately. I can separately compute the limit of f of x as x goes to a, and then I can add it to the limit of g of x, right? So I can do the limit in any order. I can do it after I add the functions, or I can do it before I add the functions and then just add the values, right? Property two is that the product Right, the limit of a product 
f of x times g of x is equal to the product of the limits. Same thing, I can do the limit in either order. I can do it before I multiply these functions together, like we have on the left, right? I multiply the functions together, then take the limit as x goes to a, or I can find the limit of the first and then multiply it by the limit of the second. Right? So I can do this in any order. Right? The third property is that if I scale my function, it's the same thing as scaling the limit. So the limit as x goes to a of some constant c times f of x, right? This is the same thing as if I took the limit and then multiplied by the constant. Okay? C times the limit. And then the last pro property. Right? And, and note that you know if I multiply by a constant and I get the same thing as a constant times limit, then that means that if the constant was negative one, then I have like a subtraction. Right? F of x, you know, plus c times g of x, where c is negative one. Right? And then I would say that the limit of a difference of functions is just the difference of. The, right? So that's kind of implied by properties one and three. Okay. And then the last property has a caveat. Right. You know, for g of x, sorry, for the limit of g of x, x goes to a, not equal to zero, right? As long as the limit of g isn't zero, then I can do quotient in any order. f divided by g of x is the same thing as limit of f of x to a divided by the limit of g of x, right? If the limit of g of x was equal to zero, then we can't do this because we can't divide by zero. So as long as the limit of g of x as x goes to a is not zero, then this works, right? I can split up the limit and the quotient, right? So I can do the quotient of these functions and then take the limit, or I can find the limit separately and then divide them. Any order. Okay, so what does this imply? You know, these properties imply we can find the limits of any polynomial function by just plugging in f, sorry, x, by plugging in. Okay, so let's do an example, right? All I have to do is plug in the value because of the way all these properties work, right? Constant function just gives me constant, x just gave me x. So, you know, with those two and then all these other properties, I can find the limit of any polynomial by just plugging in the value of x. Okay, so let's say we have this function. 2x squared plus 8x, okay, and we want to know the limit as x goes to 5 of 2x squared plus 3, okay, the limit of this whole thing, all right, so let's apply our properties of limits, right, we can split up the sum based on property 1, the limit as x goes to 5 of 2x squared plus the limit as x goes to 5 of 3x. Right, whenever you have these limits, you get to, you know, maybe bracket them off to keep them separate so you don't get confused. Okay, so the limit of the sum is the sum of the limits. Okay, and then here I have, you know, some scalar factors, so I can pull those out by property 3. So this is 2 limit as x goes to 5 of x squared plus 3 limit as x goes to x brackets are right, so 2 times the limit of x squared plus 3 times the limit of x, right, and then this one I can use that product rule, right, so this becomes 2 times limit as x goes to 5 of x times limit as x goes to x plus x goes to x, and 
now that these are just limits of x, right, the function x, we already found that you can just plug in this value to get the limit value. That gives me 2 times 5 times 5 plus 3 times 5. So 10, 50 plus 15 gives me 60. Okay, and that would be the same thing, right, as if I just plugged in 5 here. This would give me 2, 5 squared plus 5 equals 50 plus 15 equals right? So I, I showed you that you can do this by doing those properties, but in general, when you have a polynomial, you can just plug in that number here to compute it nice and fast. Okay, we'll do one more example. Um, it's from the previous section, um, and I like it because textbook example has it kind of um, this textbook example says you have at that's falling according to uh, according to the function y of t equals 5.0 t squared and why is the distance fallen In this is in meters, right? And then t is in seconds. Okay, so cat's falling according to this function, right? And we want to find the speed it's falling. At time one second. Okay. We're going to have to do that rate of change and then take that limit. Okay, so we want to find the speed, right? That would be the limit as delta t zero of delta y over delta t. And since y is our function of time, right? this is limit delta t goes to zero of y at one plus delta t minus y at one divided by delta t. Right, so this is the average, uh, the average rate of change of its height, and then we're taking the limit as delta t goes to zero to represent, you know, taking that limit of those averages rates as this time interval gets smaller and smaller gives you the instantaneous rate of change, the speed at time one. Okay, so let's apply our function. Right, so we plug in our function limit delta t goes to zero of five times one plus delta t squared minus five times t squared, all that divided by delta t, right? At this point, I can't just plug in delta t equals zero because it's sitting there on the bottom, right? So I need to simplify the top first. Or this gives me five times one plus two delta t plus delta t squared minus five, all that when you're doing algebra like this, it's really easy to forget to write your limit. So don't forget to write your limit because otherwise um, it's not correct anymore. Right? So make sure you always have your limit in front of your function when you're doing this algebra. Okay, so then from here, I'll factor in the 5. So this gives me limit as delta t goes to 0 of 5 plus 10 delta t plus 5 delta t squared minus 5 over delta t, and then the 5s are going to cancel, and I'll be left with limit as delta t goes to 0 of 10 delta t plus 5 delta t squared over delta t, and now we can divide out the delta t's, right, because it shows up everywhere on the top, so I can cross this one out with one of those. That gives me limit as delta t goes to 0, 10 plus 5 delta t. OK. And now that it's in this form, right, now it's just a polynomial of delta t. Polynomial of delta t. So that means we can apply our limit properties. Right, which basically means we can just plug in delta t equals zero to calculate this one. 
that gives me 10 plus 5 times 0 equals 10. Right, so this is our 10 meters per second if we were to keep track of these uh, units the whole time. Okay, and so now we have gone through how to take a function, calculate its speed, or basically its derivative at a point, right, by using the limit definition of the derivative and evaluating the limits using these limit properties. Okay, and then I'll do one last example where we're thinking about a rational function. Right, so a rational function is a division of polynomials or a quotient of polynomials. Rational function. Right, that's polynomial divided by a different polynomial. Right, polynomials is, is you know some function with powers of x. So this is powers of x over some other set of powers of x. Okay, so let's say we're looking at the limit as x goes to 5 of 2x squared plus 3x over 2x plus 1. Right, first thing we have to check is that g of x, right, the thing on the bottom is not 0. Limit of g of x, x goes to 5, is not equal to 0. Right, so limit as x goes to 5 of 2x plus 1 is, we can plug it in, right, since this is just a polynomial, so this gives me 2 times 5, 1, or 11, which is not 0. So we're good, right? Now we can apply limit property 4, which says that the quotient of the limits is the limit of the quotient. Sorry, the limit of the quotients is the quotient of the limits. So that tells us that this limit is equal to the limit as x goes to 5 of 2x squared plus 3x divided by the limit as x goes to 5 of 2x plus 1, right? So we can separate. We don't have to do the division here. We can do the quotients after we do the limits, right? Once they're in this form, right, each of these is just a polynomial, so we can just plug in x equals 5. But this one gives us 2 times 5 squared plus 5. The bottom gives us 2 times 5 plus 1. We computed this earlier. That's 65. The bottom is 11. And that's our final answer. We've computed the limit of this rational function by splitting up into the top and bottom, computing those limits separately, and then doing that division. And we're allowed to do that as long as the limit on the bottom is not zero.